The member for West Swan. I'd like to thank the people of West Swan for electing me into this parliament. It is indeed a great honour and privilege to be elected into public office. I will strive to serve the community well and to promote the public interest. The seat of West Swan is a new seat created after the last distribution. I'd like to acknowledge the work and effort put in by the members who served the area that now forms my seat, in particular the former member for Wanneroo, Diane Guise. West Swan covers many communities, the new suburb of Lansdale, the established suburb of Balladura, the industrial precinct of Malaga, housing developments north of the Reed Highway, half of the Swan Valley, the other half that the member for Swan Hills was just talking about, the west side, incorporating the suburbs of Caversham, West Swan and Henley Brook. Although a new electorate, the area is rich in history. We are told that the Swan District included parts of the territories of four Aboriginal tribes. We understand this land now to be the lands of the Noongar people. Michael J. Bork wrote in his book, On the Swan, and I quote, The Swan Valley had for many thousand years been one of the best sources of food supplies for the Aborigines of the Swan Coastal Plain. The lush grasses of its river meadows made it the haunt of kangaroos and other marsupials. It was precisely these areas from which the Aborigines had obtained most of their traditional foods. The valley was also the setting of the landing in 1827 of Captain James Stirling. Captain Stirling was on a voyage to explore the Swan River region. He went beyond the mud flats of what is now known as the Causeway and pitched camp at Ellen's Brook. Captain Stirling described the area in glowing terms, the richness of the soil, the bright, the bright foliage of the shrubs, the majesty of the surrounding trees, the abrupt and red-coloured banks of the river occasionally seen, and the view of the blue summits of the mountains, from which we are not far distant, made the scenery around this spot as beautiful as anything of the kind I had ever witnessed. While my electorate has a very rich past, it has an exciting future. The Swan Valley continues to be a source of food in the region, with market gardens, fabulous restaurants and, of course, the vineyards, producing magnificent wine. The valley has become a tourism destination. It hosts visitors from Western Australia, interstate and overseas on a daily basis. Tourism in the valley continues to grow, with popular festivals and fairs drawing big crowds every year. These events and the valley's natural attractions make it one of the most popular destinations for tourists coming to Perth. As well as serving the community with food and wine, my electorate is also providing new places for Western Australians to live. There is significant urban development that is about to take place through the Lord Street Corridor. A number of new housing developments are planned through Caversham, West Swan and Henley Brook, accommodating thousands of new residents. The suburb of Lansdale is still accommodating new homes. The Malaga Industrial Precinct is growing rapidly, with new businesses moving to the area every day. An electorate as diverse as West Swan brings it with it many challenges. As the member for Swan Hills has outlined, getting that balance right in regard to the increasing number of visitors and preserving the uniqueness of the Swan Valley. Maintaining the valley as a great place to live, but also accommodating the new commercial ventures. The problem of antisocial behaviour is an issue throughout the electorate, as many other members have said in this place. Hoons on the suburban streets and graffiti on public buildings. The electorate is also in need of a greater police presence. I know, for example, a priority project for the police department is to establish a standalone police station in Balladura. The growing suburbs will need new schools over the next five to ten years, and in respect to older schools, maintenance funding is, requ is required. The other key challenge for the West Swan region is improved transport infrastructure, roads and public transport. My electorate is not that far from the city centre. It contains a major industrial and commercial precinct. But it does not have a freeway or highway connection to the CBD, making travel into the city centre far more time consuming than it should be. The east-west connections are being developed via key access roads such as Nangara Road, Hepburn Avenue and Reed Highway, 
but these require further upgrades. My electorate also does not contain a train line or any mass transit system of any kind. Given the size of the electorate and given its proximity to the city centre, this is something that has to be addressed. I am glad the Liberal Party adopted, adopted Labor's election commitment to build a new rail line to Ellenbrook. I can't wait to see it happen. Done right, the new rail line will service a large number of suburbs in the North East Corridor, including those suburbs for the member, you know, for, the member for Morley. In fact, when you stand back, and look at the metropolitan train map, you notice there is one missing spoke in the rail network, and that is the spoke serving the northeastern corridor. With the right route, communities such as Balladuro could be served with a new line. It will also ensure that the new housing developments in the West Swan area can be connected into a public transport system, allowing for better planning and more affordable living into the future. I'm looking forward to working with the new government on this project. The electorate also requires better bus services into the area. Most of these initiatives would not cost that much, but would vastly improve the quality of life for the community. The former Labor government made some significant commitments to roads in the region. Labor committed and signed the contract to the extension of the Reed Highway from West Swan Road to Great Northern Highway, including the new Middle Swan Bridge. Labor also committed $72 million to the Reed Highway and Alexander Road overpass an overdue project that will help traffic congestion and safety in the area. The funding is there in the forward estimates. I hope it is not consigned to history and does get underway soon. Mr Speaker, I will work hard to represent the people of West Swan. I want the people of West Swan to be given some priority over the next four years. Just because West Swan is in the metropolitan area, it should not be seen as a less worthy electorate. I understand the royalties for regions deal and I acknowledge the need to spend throughout Western Australia, but not to the complete detriment to people living in the suburbs. I also do not subscribe to the notion that changing economic conditions means all bets are off for people living in the suburbs. When what Labor won government in 2001, the budget was in deficit and the economy was contracting. That's not the case now. We are here to hold the government to account. The Liberal Party made a number of commitments, including adopting some of the Labor's, and they made some big spending promises, and they failed to properly budget for the royalties for the region's deal. I don't think the people of the suburbs should have to suffer as a result of this. Mr Speaker, I would like to thank the Labor Party for give, giving me the opportunity to serve in this parliament. The Labor Party is a great party, representing ordinary people. It is the party of the public interest. I know that many people who voted for me on September 6 did so because I was their Labor Party candidate. I hope to continue to serve the party well and that, I and that I repay the faith and trust that has been shown to me. I became attracted to politics and the Labor Party while I was growing up. My parents were both post-war migrants from Calabria, Italy. My father was born in a small town called Malacuca. He migrated to Australia in the 1950s. When he arrived here, in Perth, it was a very different place, and I'm glad to be following the member for Swan Hills speech because I think there's some common themes. He spent many years helping develop West, Western Australia, in clearing land in Wanneroo for housing developments, building stations along the Armadale and Fremantle train lines, and fencing properties for the pastoralists in the regions. In many instances, as migrant labour, he was not treated that well. Yet he did have a very, very lucky escape. He and his three friends were offered a Sorry, he and his three friends were offered a job in a mining town, that being Wittenoom. Fortunately for my father, he rejected that job offer. My dad is here today, sadly his friends are not. My mother was born in Cumperley, where she lived with her six brothers and one sister. She migrated to Australia in the 1960s and was accompanied over a period of time by her six brothers, her parents, while her sister moved to Switzerland. My mother took jobs in the local restaurant industry and worked as a cook and cook's assistant. My parents met and married and established an orchard in Rolleystone, and they still live there on the property. I spent many days working on the orchard with my sister, and it's during these times that I gained a deep understanding of the philosophies and ethics of my mum and dad. My mum and dad weren't political activists, but they taught me many political lessons. When they were growing up, they never had health care. They had limited schooling and they looked on in their respective regions in Italy as some, the wealthier, did what they pleased. 
they used to often debate, and the member for Cannington raised that Labor people often debate on who was poorer. My mum and dad used to have that debate all the time in the household, whose town was poorer. I think my, mum ta my mum's town won the day, with probably less donkeys per capita than my father's town. From my parents, I gained my political philosophy. Fairness, opportunity, a proper distribution of wealth, and an acknowledgement that everyone has the right to live on this planet with a sense of integrity, security and economic freedom. These are my beliefs, and these beliefs are what led me to the Labor Party. Mr Speaker, as I have stated, I grew up in Rollystone. I attended the local public schools, Rollystone Primary School, Rollystone District High School and Kelmscott Senior High School. I attended Curtin University, where I did my degree in business with a major in economics. After graduating, I moved to Canberra to work for the Department of Finance. I then moved to Western Australia, back to Western Australia, where I worked in the department's Western Australian office. I then worked to, went to work with the State Treasury Department here in Perth. Member for Perth. <laughs> I had the opportunity to be involved in many areas of public policy, including the production of federal and state budgets. In 1997, I left the Treasury Department to work for the then leader of the opposition, Dr Jeff Gallup. Since that time, I have worked both for Jeff Gallup and the member for Willoughby, Mr Alan Carpenter. I had the privilege to be involved in a number of significant projects and policies for this state. I also had the opportunity not only to work for two great premiers, but smart and hard-working ministers and some very professional and talented public servants. Some of the achievements I believe the former government can be most proud of include the Mandra Rail Line, the Thornley Rail Line, the Clarkson Extension, improved train stations, electronic ticketing or huge improvements to our rail system, the health reform process, the protection of our forests in Ningaloo, the increased school leaving age, Australia's first major desalination plant and the commitment to the second, the development of a domestic gas policy. These achievements look even stronger when coupled with a set of books the former government produced, billions of dollars of investment, net debt under control, and most importantly, this was all done without privatisation. I am not a supporter of privatisation. To me, it's a lazy option of government. Governments are elected to manage, to invest, to serve, not to sell. The outcomes of privatisation are never as good as promised, in particular in areas of transport and health. Privatisation often leads to higher charges, decline in services or taxpayer bailouts. The sale of the West Rail West Rail Freight Network was a clear example. I would also like to touch upon our federal system of government. I am a strong federalist. I believe our federation fosters innovation and creativity. It allows for our economies to develop natural st strengths for diversity. Diversity is not a bad thing. I do not subscribe to the notion to be pro-WA, you are somehow un-Australian or secessionist. Many countries with strong democracies, such as the United States of America, have a strong federal system. The States of America have rich history, proud identities, which rather, rather than detract, enhance the nation's character. In Australia, I feel we are preoccupied with the desire for uniformity. Yes, uniformity is good for business, but in the same respect, flexibility is good for business. If a federal industry assistance scheme is abolished, should an estate have the flexibility to step in and offer an alternative? Would we have a gas industry if all decisions about its development had been left to Canberra? Let's work and make our federation stronger, and as a state, let's gather those benefits. Sorry. I'm also a strong supporter of our education system. I attended my local public schools, and I believe I was well served by them. I believe we as members of parliament have a role to support our educators and our schools. In my electorate of West Swan, I have a number of public and private schools. I have met with all the principals and have been impressed with the level of dedication and professionalism. professionalism. What I saw were committed individuals who cared deeply for the children they are in charge of. However, I do think we sometimes expect too much from these schools. I don't believe we should expect them expect or rely on the classroom to be the only vehicle for teaching values and responsibilities in the community. It's impossible to do. When there is a problem identified in society, we attempt to fix it in the schools. Teachers to be everything, the teacher of values, of ethics, 
of social responsibility, of physical fitness, of healthy eating, and it continues. I think responsibility needs to go broader. More generally, we need to, be, to all take a level of responsibility for our actions. Our natural tendency is to blame or put responsibility onto others. We react to issues by trying to prescribe everything. Governments have a le le legitimate role in regulating, protecting and caring for its citizens, but we cannot abrogate our personal responsibility. I am a supporter of creating a more connected and cohesive society. While door knocking in the election campaign, I was struck by the level of security at the homes. And again, that's, this has been raised by a number of new members in their speeches. The sense of isolation I felt many people had. I do believe we need to get smarter about how we plan our suburbs, how we create our communities. We need to create more alive and inclusive suburbs. We need to revitalise and re-energise our suburbs, creating a better sense of community, making us feel safer in our homes. This is particularly relevant for the older in society who often feel more vulnerable and isolated. One of the tools to achieve this is the enhancement of our public transport system. Another is better planning for our suburbs. It also means revitalising our older suburbs, creating safer suburbs. We also need to be better in developing places for our young people to hang out or to be after school and on weekends. We need to focus on creating safer places where our young people can socialise and get support should they need it. I think it needs to be a, more, a bit more sophisticated than just creating a skate park. There are some models are out there and I think we should all work to apply these models throughout the suburbs. I want to speak about the future. Western Australia is a great place. We have so much to be proud of. Confidence to take on the world, abundant resources and a great lifestyle. And we have an exciting future ahead of us. But we need to be up to the challenge. Western Australia is changing. We have experienced a growth spurt. There's more people living in our cities. Mr Speaker, can I have an extension? Extension granted. Thank you. There's more people living in our cities. There's more international and interstate workers and visitors. Younger people want to stay here. They don't want to travel interstate to have an exciting life. We need to put forward a positive plan for the future. I believe the former Labor, Labor government, government and had a plan and the Labor opposition has a plan. Yes, there's always competing priorities, but gov government sometimes have to look beyond the next day to the next generation. Our plans to build world-class sporting, entertainment and cultural facilities, to create a foreshore development and our plans to continue to modernise and expand our public transport system. I've heard comments that we're not big enough to have a standalone museum and that Perth doesn't experience urban congestion like our other cities. I do fear it's like we've jumped into the, into the DeLorean and gone back to the future. Prince once wrote a song, let's party like it's 1999. Let's hope this government doesn't govern like it's 1999. <laughs> Mr Speaker, before I finish, Mr Speaker, before I finish today, there are a lot of people I'd like to thank. The last two leaders of the Labor Party, Jeff Gallup and the member for Willoughby, Alan Carpenter. These are people of integrity and honesty who understood and represented ordinary people. They never compromised their integrity or their values. I respect them greatly and thank them for the opportunities they have provided me over the past decade. I'd also like to, th like to thank the many people I've worked with over the years, including people like Kieran Murphy, Guy Houston and Olivia Crowley, who brought a lot of enjoyment to my working life. On a more personal basis, my husband Tim, who has been of great support to me and took a month of leave to help me during the campaign. The deal was, if I won the seat, he got to choose a dog of his choice. And we did, and we did do this deal before the Obama deal, I can assure you. <laughs> Unfortunately, that choice was a Rottweiler Oscar, who now lives with us in the backyard and has half destroyed it. <laughs> I'd like to thank Daniel Pastorelli, who managed my campaign, Tristan Cockman, David and Barbara Dupel, Darren Foster, John Kerry, Ryan Taff and Daniel Smith. I would also like to thank all the other people who helped me on the campaign and on election day. My cousin, a psychologist, worked on a polling booth for the first time. I think he needed counselling afterwards <laughs> as he got exposed to the rawness of politics. To my family, my mum Pina, my dad Nick, my sister Connie, my brother-in-law Dennis, my niece and nephew, Lauren and Matthew, thank you very much. A better family you could not hope for. To my good friends, Joanne Young, Gabriella Rogers and Michelle Ord. 
Joanne lives in New Zealand, Gabriella in Mel Sydney, and Michelle in Southern Cross. Thanks for your lifelong friendship and support. To my extended family, including those cousins, aunties and uncles, here in Perth, in Geelong and overseas, who have followed my fortunes, thank you very much. And a special hello to my auntie from Switzerland, here watching in the chamber. Child's here. Mr Speaker, I will finish with a quote from the recent Joe Biden, Sarah Palin vice presidential debate. And don't worry, it's not from Sarah Palin. <laughs> Democrat senator and now vice president-elect Joe Biden was talking about his fiery relationship with the Republicans. He records some advice he received after a fiery interchange with a Republican senator. The colleague told Senator Biden, and I wish I could do the accent, but I'm not going to attempt to, Joe, understand one thing. Everyone's sent here for a reason, because there's something in them that their folks like. Don't question their motive. I was struck by that comment, and I hope it can stay with me. Thank you very much.